Hi, my name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and in this video I wanted to kind of cover what the first point of Aries is and the fact that it's a reference point for coordinate systems and things like that. But before I go there, it's worth noting that actually in the members section I have months and months worth of videos that are not currently available publicly and what I do is I basically record a load and I put them in the members section and then they will they are slowly released publicly. So if you're interested in any of those other videos and some other benefits, then definitely become a member of the channel. So first, before we actually look at the first point of Aries, we actually need to define what the equinoxes are, what they are, and we have two of them. We have the March one and we have the September one. And this is where the Earth's tilt, because Earth is tilted relative to its orbital direction or its orbital plane as it goes around the sun. It sort of gives us our seasons, basically. And at those two locations on its orbit, it's neither tilted towards the sun or away. So it's actually perpendicular to the actual orbital or the, the line if you draw it from the sun to the Earth, it was perpendicular. It means our days and nights are actually the same length at these two locations on the orbit. So we need to define what they actually are first. So to do that, we first need to actually have a look at the ecliptic. Now uh, the ecliptic is the orbital plane of Earth, or if we're actually on Earth and looking at the movement of the sun in the sky, that would be the path that the sun would take in the sky. So that's the ecliptic. And because Earth is tilted, it's kind of offset from Earth's equator. So you've got the north celestial pole and the south celestial pole here, which are essentially the rotation axis. And the equator would be perpendicular to that rotation there. And the ecliptic is obviously offset from that. It has some angle which is relative to kind of our tilt and a few other things actually as well. Now we need to define the celestial equator. This is on the same plane as Earth's equator. So this is actually relative to the Earth's rotation, basically. So if you were to basically use Earth's equator, then we kind of go out, that would be the celestial equator on the celestial sphere. So we've got the celestial equator, we've got the ecliptic, and it's the two locations where those two intersect where we get the equinox. So we get two of those where they intersect. So as the Earth goes around the Sun on its orbit, it's tilted. That tilt obviously changes relative to the Sun, which is why we get our seasons. And there's two locations where the tilt is neither towards or away from the Sun. And it's where they intersect here, basically. And that's your March and your September equinox. So during the equinox, your day and night are going to be the same length. Now before or leading up to this, depending on which one it is, your days would have been getting shorter or longer. And then after the equinox, they'll do the opposite. They'll start getting longer or shorter again because the tilt changes. It will get more tilted away, basically. So during the equinox, just as I mentioned before, if you were to draw a line from the sun to the earth, obviously these are not... The, the right size for this is just an illustration. But if you draw a, a line from the sun to the earth, then the tilt of earth would be perpendicular to that line, essentially. That's why we get the length of the day being the same, because it's neither tilted towards or away from the sun. And that's what happens at the equinox. Now, the first point of Aries is actually the March equinox. So it's called the first point of Aries but it's actually the March equinox, and it's that one where it intersects there. Now, the first point of Aries occurs at the same point on Earth's orbit. So as it goes around, it's gonna occur approximately kind of at the same point. It means that the, the night sky at that time of the year is gonna be the same. And when that actually occurs, so when the intersect occurs, the equinox occurs, you'll always have the same constellation of where it actually occurs. And this is used as a reference point on the celestial sphere. So if you look at the coordinate system for an object in the night sky on the celestial sphere, that coordinate system starts at the first point of Aries. And because it's a constant point on the on the on Earth's orbit, and it occurs during uh, a particular constellation. So on the celestial sphere here, we've got the celestial equator and the ecliptic, and we can see where they're intersecting here. Now, right ascension is the angular position on this celestial equator. So on this celestial sphere here, 
if you go around, essentially it's the, it's the same sort of coordinate system as you have on the longitude of Earth. It's given in hours, minutes, seconds though, the, uh, the right ascension, but it will basically start from the first point of Aries. So at that intersect there between the celestial equator and the ecliptic, then your right ascension is zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. So it starts at that reference point there. So that's basically it really. Now, if we had an object in the sky, let's say a star on the celestial sphere, it'll have a coordinate so we can actually find it. And it will have a coordinate relative to this reference point, so relative to the first point of Aries, and it will have some coordinate in the RA, which will be some hours, some minutes, some seconds, but the starting point is the first point of Aries. Now, it's called the first point of Aries because it originally occurred in the constellation of Aries a long time ago when it was first defined. Now, it's not there anymore because Earth's orbit actually does process. So Earth's orbit is constantly processing or it's kind of essentially rotating around. Earth's orbit is elliptical. I mean, I've massively exaggerated here, but it, it processes, so it kind of rotates around like this, which means now it's actually in a different constellation. So it's not in Aries anymore, despite it still being called that. So it's called that mostly historically. Now, to do a full rotation of this procession, it takes about 26,000 years to do one full cycle. So actually, the point where this occurs or the constellation is going to keep changing in time, basically. But it will, it will basically come back around to Aries at some point in the future anyway. So thank you for watching. If you've got any questions or ideas for future videos, then just pop them in the comments below.